The second semi-final match of the World Cup 2023 is being played between Australia and South Africa at the Eden Garden Stadium in Kolkata. South Africa won the toss and decided to bat. Notable team changes included Shamsi coming in for Ngidi. In the South African team, while Australia opted for Glenn Maxwell and Mitchell Stark, sidelining Marcus Stoinis and Scott Abbott. South Africa faced a challenging start, losing early wicket as Captain Temba Bavuma fell for a duck in the first over and Quinton de Kock scored only three runs before falling to Josh Hazelwood within the initial first 10 overs, leaving the team at 18 for two. Travis Head and Hazelwood took crucial wickets, disrupting partnerships and putting pressure on South Africa. The early overs highlighted Australia's effective bowling and South Africa's struggle setting the stage for a competitive semi-final. Well, joining me are three important guests. Taslim Granger, Zimbabwe's national player, who's also done her coaching stint. Joining us live from London is David Brooks, former cricket director, Channel 4 UK. Noel David, former international cricketer, India. And we have John Nyumbu, the ex-National uh, Zimbabwe player and uh, who's currently enjoying his stint in England as a coach. I'll come to John Nyumbu. John, how do you think the situation is, is flowing at the, at the middle at Eden Gardens right now? What has been your understanding and reading of the first... 30 odd overs. Yeah, thank you for having me on your show once again. Uh, it's always a privilege to be able to talk about cricket with distinguished guests like you guys. But yeah, like you say, second semi final. And yeah, South Africa, for me, I think they should have batted first because looking at the conditions and the overcast and, and uh, the wicket being under covers, we knew that it was going to do quite a bit early on. And we saw. Uh, by the loss of the, the early wickets. But it's good to see Miller taking up a bit more responsibility with the bat. I've always felt that he could bat a little bit higher. But today it showed that he can because he came in at a time where SA needed someone to build a partnership and he did that very well with Andre Klassen. Unfortunately, Klassen got out to um, a bit of a Brilliant, um, as I can say, bowling change from Pat Cummings, bringing Travis Head a part-timer to try and orchestrate the breakthrough. But yeah, South Africa are looking to crawl their way back into this game and hopefully post a respectable total and hopefully have um, runs on the board as, as their advantage. Is it a knockout game? Runs on the board is always crucial and we'll see how, first and foremost, they look to close this inning and secondly, how they'll look to go about their bowling inning. Absolutely, how they look to go about their bowling innings. Roland Butcher, distinguished English player and now the chief selector of the West Indian team. Roland Butcher, pleasure to have you on our show once again. Do you think uh, South Africa is struggling? What is your opinion about it, considering that the, the conditions are overcast? Yeah, first of all, um Good day to everyone involved with the broadcast. There was always a question mark against South Africa. I think everyone did whether the past would come back to haunt South Africa. I think they overachieved um, in this tournament so far. They played some excellent cricket up to this point, but at the semi-final stage was always going to be a situation where you're not quite sure just how South Africa would handle that situation. Okay, Australia have had the better of the game so far simply because of the conditions and the way they have bought. And really, South Africa would need to get at least a total of 250 plus to really feel that they've got a chance in the game. So at the moment, I think Australia very much in charge. But we just have to wait and see what South Africa has got left in them. Absolutely. Uh, Roland, yesterday while talking to David Gar, we actually stumbled upon this point that the team that wins the toss has an, un, I mean, kind of an undue advantage getting into the match, and he quite uh, he was very vociferous about his stand on it. Would you also believe today, uh, despite winning the toss, things didn't go the the way that they intended it to go? Well, it just shows that you're never too sure. Um, you know, you can win the toss in field, and it can go horribly wrong, or you can win the toss in bat, and that can go horribly wrong. So. <laughs> I think at times they're too much um, 
emphasis is placed on the, on the conditions and winning the toss. At the end of the day, you know, you've got to go and play the cricket and play it well. Um, South Africa chose to bat today. Australia has bowled well. And they find themselves in this position. You know, it could easily be a reverse situation where South Africa, South Africa had put Australia into bat. Then Australia had got off to a very good start yes. and then get a big score. So it swings around the roundabouts. Absolutely. The game of glorious uncertainties. Noel David, are the, the, the foreign teams, are they getting the taste of Indian pitch? You win the toss yesterday, you win the match, score a big, uh, post a big total and you win that. And today, you win the toss and you're struggling. This is the same Indian pitch that we're talking about. So is it fair to say that you never to, you know, you can never be so convinced about how the conditions are going to change and play? Your view is Noel David. I think we have a free strip. Uh, you've got a brilliant uh, setting on your back. Same. Yeah, go on. Questions, but uh, yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, uh, the cru toss actually plays a crucial role uh, before you can start because everything depends on the toss. Like yesterday, you know, India won the toss. They elected to bat. They put up a total of 397, and it was a good chase. I know New Zealand losing by 71. But today, it, it, it went the way, the way around, you know. South Africa won the toss, but they, they lost early wickets. But, you know, the... Uh, the, the uh... No, I, I'm afraid I'll have to cut you there. Because of your transmission problem, the, huh? the internet connection seems to be awful. Tasmin Granger, what do we have as an update right now? Yeah, good evening to you all. You know, South Africa just... Yeah, not doing the greatest day in the office for them today. You know, losing early wickets up front. Not to mention the fact that they failed to deal with Josh Hazelwood up front. He's bowled eight overs, three maidens, gone for just 12 runs, picked up two wickets and sitting with an economy of 1.50 for a seam bowler in the top 10, in the 10 power play this morning, which I think just might be the lowest economy rate thus far, so far in the World Cup. South Africa find themselves 171 for the loss of six in 43 overs. Well, absolutely. This seems to be an interesting game coming out to be. Well, David Brooks joining us on the show live from London. David, what do you think of the entire situation? We made a prediction that South Africa is going to win. However, all our punditry seems to be going the way English cricket team has been batting. I should listen more carefully to what Tasmin says in future. On the breakfast show this morning, she was talking about the soil and the ground conditions. And I have to say, I switched off. I'm not a horticulturalist. I thought this talk has no use. I've got no use of this talk. But it turned out that she's absolutely right. The ground, the conditions have played a big part, I think. That soil in Kolkata, the fact the wicket was covered, you know, it was, it was definitely assisting the bowlers early on, probably the most helpful conditions that we've seen for bowlers. And now we've seen the ball turning more than any other time in the tournament. Travis Head, 4.3 degrees of turn. Travis Head, the biggest spinner of the ball in the tournament so far. <laughs> OK, so let's see how Australia uh, get on. David Miller's played a great hand here. I mean, yes, I think there was an element of nerves playing a role earlier on in the failure of the South African top order to counter punch in any way. They allowed Australia to bowl as they wanted to bowl, and impeccable lengths and great opening spell. I thought it was a fascinating first hour of cricket, and so it is true. When the ball dominates the bat, you get much more interesting games, don't you? And for the, uh, for the neutral, uh, of which I would claim to be, uh, I'd say this is a very interesting and, in, and, and enthralling game to watch. David Miller's played a great hand, and as you know, I'm a huge fan of Maharaj. I think he's got a lot to say in terms of the outcome of this match. I just hope that Shamsi does his bit. To me, he's been the weak link in the South Africa uh, lineup so far. Some sloppy fielding and uh, hasn't really bowled that well. But if South Africa can field as well as Australia did, the way the intensity with which Australia fielded in that first hour, David Warner throwing himself around. It was test cricket, wasn't it? And um, South Africa didn't have any answer to it in top order. But good on David Miller. We only usually see him in the last 10 overs or in a T20 franchise shirt. 
And it's great to see him playing the type of innings that we know he's capable of, but all too rarely gets the opportunity to bat. If he bats through now, and South Africa can post 230 plus, as far as I'm concerned, it's still game on. Roland Butcher, uh, 230, do you think, is it good defendable total? And how can teams get horribly wrong in reading the, the pitch? Considering that David may be ignorant of the difference between the red soil, the black soil, so was I. But uh, how can the teams be wrong of the national side who've been playing day in and day out? This is their usual stuff. Your views? Yeah, first of all, I don't think, I don't believe 230 will be enough. Um, despite any conditions, whether the ball is moving around or spinning, um, in this modern game, really, I think 230 is not going to be enough in this particular game. Uh, South Africa would need something, as I said, in excess of 250, really to challenge um, Australia. Um, at the same time, you can read the situations incorrectly because, you know, obviously if the pitch is covered all the time, you know, there's going to be a degree of sweating yeah. and yeah, yeah. that leaves some moisture in the pitch. So Australia have got the boulders, particularly at the start of the innings, to exploit any moisture. If there's any moisture in the pitch, you know, someone like Josh Hazelwood will find it, back comings, etc. So, they're, they're masters at exploiting that. It may have been fortunate for them that South Africa won the toss, because who knows, Australia might have won the toss and elected to back, and then find themselves in a similar uh, position. But there's still a lot of cricket to be played in this game. Yes. What, is more, what is interesting, and what we we'll all have to find out is, just exactly how this pitch plays later on in the game. Does it get better? Does it deteriorate? Or does it stay the same? Those are the questions that need to be answered. Well, Tasneem has an update with, uh, with her. Tasneem, what is the latest update? So, currently, South Africa find themselves now seven down, oh. courtesy of Pat Cummings that has gotten rid of Gerald Kutsia. He's been caught off a short ball, trying to get rid of it, hit the gloves, and it's gone through to the keeper behind him, and he is gone. They are now currently 173 for the loss of seven in 43.4 overs. John Yembo. Would you like to be a part of the team which is batting right now, the way South Africa has been currently showing their display? Oh, being in the bat oh, on the batting front at the moment is is quite a difficult one. But um, I like something that Roland said earlier about assessing the conditions. You could assess them correctly. You could not assess them correctly. And on this part, South Africa made a little bit of a mishap in that as in they didn't have someone to craft and it ended up turning up to David Miller, their free-flowing player, to be the one who's grafting um, uh, for the team. Hindsight, as they say, is always easy. Imagine if South Africa had two more guys who had weathered that little bit of a, of, of a storm where the ball was moving around. Now the wicket is looking like the India wicket that it is, where it will spin a bit, where it will start skidding on. And also, the game has been uh, under lights the whole time, so it would be interesting what the dew factor will be like in the second innings, if he's going to continue spinning, if it's going to skid on. But yeah, being on the batting front at the moment is, 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 not, uh, is not the place to be. Australia look <laughs> certain that they could go on and, and win this game, but it's important that they don't make the same mistakes that South Africa did uh, in the first innings when they got Absolutely, gone. absolutely. We have now Noel David, the former Indian cricketer. Noel, you seem to be now uh, good with your internet connection. Noel, how does uh, South Africa play from here? Do you think they need to just play there a while or, or just explode, irrespective of the overs? I think uh, the main person will be Miller. He play now from here. I think he needs to get on to play to complete the 50 overs. I feel so if South Africa gets 250 and above, any bonus from their runs, say like 260, 265, it'd be a good score on, on this pitch because as you said, if Trevor said can spin the ball, why not Shamshu can also can spin the ball. So, you know, it'll be a good contest if it's 260 and above. As, uh, uh, you know, even, uh, uh, you know, the Australians also can struggle the initial, if they get David Warner really quick, and put on the brakes with uh, Smith and uh, and and uh, uh, Trevor said. Then I think uh, there'll be a good uh, game contest like yesterday. What we had, absolutely good game like we had yesterday. Almost 700 runs uh, being scored at that fantastic Vankhede Stadium. Noel, I'd like to ask you another. 
Do you think it's time for India to be mentally prepared to face the Aussie attack at the finals? Your views? Well, you, you, they have to prepare themselves, whether it's South Africa or whether it's the Australians. They have to be mentally prepared to face anybody because uh, it is the key final. We are playing after 2011, what we won, and now it's another finals for them. And they have to be well prepared to face anybody in the ring. So whether it's Australians or whether it's the South Africans, we'll, we have to see who upsets uh, uh, the Auss Aussies at present. If the South Africans upset, then keen contest. If the South Afri uh, Australian comes in, again, it will be a keen contest for England. So they have to be ready in the ring to face anybody. Mm, very interesting. Very interesting point you've made. Just wanted to remind our viewers that in 1987, when India hosted uh, the Reliance World Cup, Alan Border and his team were the winners. In 2011, MS Dhoni were the winners. So now it's almost certain that you, you will get Australia and India in the finals. Well, again, it's a game of uncertainties. I'd like to go to David Brooks. David, is it too early to, to write South Africa off or, or the writing is on the wall? Your views? I agree with both those statements. The writing is on the wall and it's too early to write South Africa off. It's a game of glorious uncertainties and who knows what will happen. Of course, I agree with what Noel's saying. You mentioned three players from Australia, if you get them out, then you've still got Labuschagne, who will relish this situation. Give him a low target and 50 overs to get them. I mean, Australia will be very happy that they preferred Labuschagne over Stoinis, because I know there was talk about Stoinis replacing Labuschagne, but when you've got Labuschagne in the middle order, um, you know, you, you've got um, uh, a batting order that goes deep. We saw not to mention Glenn Maxwell, who seems to be moving freely despite his heroics in the last game. He's bowled a very good spell. His bowling's underrated too. So there's a there's an unusual one. A likable Australian, Glenn Maxwell. We we'll hope that he does well in this game too. Rollett, we'd like to come to you before Tasneem takes over and gives us the latest update. Uh, how does one survive and, and excel in, on Indian conditions. You've played at, at, largely at the West Indies and the English conditions, but what you see from television, what do you make of this World Cup? If somebody was to stop India's juggernaut, uh, how do they do it? Just from an outside perspective. Well, to be quite honest, um, you know, to stop the juggernaut, a pitch like this is something Australia could exploit because of their seam bowling. You know, when you've got here's the wood, you've got to start and you've got Cummins, you know, if there's anything in the pitch, those are three bowlers who can find it. So ideally, Australia would want to play India on a similar pitch. They don't want the pitch to be too flat where the Indian batsmen can have a heyday. Um, you know, the top six for India have been batting extremely well, so on good pitches. Australia would obviously prefer a pitch that is much more helpful where the batters have got to fight for their runs. Within their side, they have got batsmen who can actually fight hard when things get tough. I mean, David Warner is an exciting player, but when he has to dig in, that's a job that he can do. We know Lavishan is someone who can dig in and bat. Travis Head has proven in the last year he's a very competent player. So, you know, it could be a good fight. The best possible game, I would suspect, would be on a similar pitch where the conditions allow the bowlers, um, particularly the seam bowlers, um, to be in the game. That could be an interesting contest. Well, Roland, uh, very, very thankful to you. Tasneem, what is the latest update before we go into David Brooks and get his views? Then John Niambu and uh, Neol, and then to Roland again in the last round of discussion. So, South Africa just trying to do their best to keep some runs on the board at this stage. David Miller currently on 93 off 111 deliveries. He's got eight fours and four sixes at this stage. So he just needs seven more to be able to get into that 100-run mark right now. But I don't know if he's going to get uh, too far onto the 250 mark that I believe would be comfortable, or not even comfortable, but a better total to try and defend for South Africa. Of course, Mitchell Stark has two more overs to come. He's gone for eight for 23. He's gone for picked up just two wickets in his eight overs. He's got one maiden. 
Again, Josh Hazelwood, just two for 12 in mm. his eight overs. So both those guys still have two to go. And of which four overs left just after this over, that's about to be completed by Pat Cummings. So I'm um, not entirely sure if 250 on the mark. Maybe at this stage, they just want to get into the 230s, hopefully at this stage. Well, David, now we are struggling to find 230. Do you think that looks good? Um, or, or, or just a cakewalk for us, Australia? And this time, let's have a conclusive answer. No two sides, please, of your answers. No, I, I don't think it's going to be a, a cakewalk. But I do think Australia firm favourites. Don't forget, 91 for 7 they were against Afghanistan. Yes. Before Maxwell and, uh, and the captain got them home. So if they can win from that situation, I think you can safely say they can win from any situation. <laughs> so it's Australia. I'm now shuffling my, my, my recommendation over to, uh, to Australia. I think Roland's right. They will, they will get these runs. Well, absolutely. They'll get these runs. John Nimble, what do you make of this situation? And, and who will be the pick when, it, uh, when Australia comes to bat? Or South Africa, do you think, will, will, will make some trouble for them in early on in the first 15 overs? John? I would like to give you a conclusive answer, but like um, <laughs> everyone has been saying, it's a game of uncertainties. And uh, it's got two coins to it, two, two sides to the coin to it. Yes, sorry. yes. Australia, we know they, they like taking the attack to the bowlers. So if they do that and they get off to a flyer, then it's game set and match as quickly maybe as the 40th over. But the bowlers, KG Rabada, Janssen, you know, if they make early inroads, the early inroads for me, the first power play will determine how this, how long this game will will last. Uh, so that is it for the Australians. They, for me, they are 85% into the final, but the, to get that 15%, they still need to play, need to play good cricket. Well, so playing good cricket is the point, but do you think, uh, Noel David, playing good cricket is easy on this wicket because this seems to be turning and, and behaving completely obnoxious. Your views, Noel David? Yeah, you know, it's going to be a little bit of struggle, but uh, as there is still, uh, uh, there will be later on moisture uh, due coming into play. Right. The factor. Okay, and uh, certainly the most important thing is, as I agree with John Ember saying, you know, if the first fifth, first power player, if the Aussies take away the game from the South Africa, then it's game over and set for, for the Aussies. But if, if early wickets enroll uh, South Africa, take the early wickets of the so Australians, then the game is on. We'll have some keen contest, uh, a, a, a match to be watched by us. But uh, at, at, for, at, at present, uh, I, I will go with the uh, with the 85 percent with John, John John and 15 percent. I leave it to the South Africans. Do we do we in our mind in our head now start with this kind of uh, score, which Tasneem has just said? Do you think it's time for India to wear and prepare against the Aussies, or do we go on and celebrate that part that this is the best teams, two best teams on paper on ground? will face each other in the final, Australia and India. Yeah, you know, I think um, we spoke about the fact that Australia come from losing their first three games to completely yes. winning the next ones coming out of the league stages. So momentum was in their court as well. South Africa did the same, but a bit of shaky up and down here and there. And, you know, I'm, I'm with everyone right now. The win probability is sitting on 80% currently for Australia. And um, I'm just hoping, you know, the same way Glenn Maxwell, like it's been said by Noel and everybody else, could pull out a stunner of an innings right now. You need that one bowler that's going to be the Mohamed Shami for South Africa to come out and just cause a racket, hoping that they can pull something together. Well, the experts in the house have firmly believed that it's Australia which will eventually move on to the final against India at the Narendra Modi Stadium this Sunday. Well, that's all we had time for. I thank all my guests and the panelists in studio. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.